All right, and we are live. My apologies, this is all happening. <coughs> oh, bloody hell. Ah, my apologies, this is happening uh, so late. I decided that I am not going to be uh, anti-social for once and went had dinner with some friends who I normally uh, barely see. <coughs> and the result of that is that one, I'm doing this uh, pretty late. And uh, two is that my voice is basically gone. So if you're wondering uh, why all of a sudden I have this uh, bedroom voice, well, I just spent some time trying to yell over 65,000 people at the shot show. And then during dinner, I had a ton of meetings today and I didn't go to as many booths as I wanted. So tomorrow is my last chance to wrap everything up, but I did go to a few and I had repeat visits to a couple. I went back to Steiner to look at that uh, CQT site, the uh, fused uh, red dot and the microbolometer site. I still think it's awesome. I went back and looked again at the Blazer USA scopes. I continue to be impressed. I will definitely need to test one, probably the 1 to 7 by uh, 28. They're really nice, really nice high-end uh, hunting scopes. I ran into some other people I normally don't see very much. Uh, one, among them were Jason and George uh, from uh, Badlands Precision. I've been using their bullets for a little bit, my 308. These guys are doing some damage, I think, in the ELR competition. Really, really excellent uh, lathe turned uh, solid bullets for hunting and for uh, precision. Um, really impressive. I ran into Terry Moore. Terry Moore used to run like a USA, uh, then he retired, and now I think he uh, uh, does some work for Kruger Optical. I'm gonna go see what Kruger has. I think they're gonna release some products that I'm kind of curious about. So uh, tomorrow I'll go visit Kruger and see how it goes. Uh, what else? Uh, I went and visited Trijicon again. I'm kind of curious about the thermal sites and the Snipe IR. I don't like in terms of quality. It's image quality. It looks good, but I really like the way the user interface and it works. So Trijicon did a really good job there. I went and visited Pulsar. So Cellmark is uh, Pulsar. <clears throat> Yukon, a bunch of other different things. Uh, they have a new thermal set that looks like a normal 30 millimeter tube scope. It actually looks pretty good. It's executed reasonably well, decent controls. Uh, some controls, you know, need to be a little bit tightened, but so I think what I saw were prototypes, but it's very respectable. You know, I, I, I thought it would, honestly, looking at pictures and advertising, I thought it wouldn't be quite as good. I generally looked at a few, um, you know, thermal and uh, digital sites and uh, one of the things I'm trying to make sense of is the user interface. And the uh, traditional user interface for thermal and digital scopes you know, with multiple buttons on top, just not doing it for me. I like rotary knobs. So uh, I think this new Pulsar is not bad. I think Trijicon is doing a really, really good job of it. Um, there are a few others. Here and there, uh, Bushnell has uh, announced two thermal scopes, a 640 by 480 with uh, that will run about three and a half thousand, should be ready mid-year, maybe third quarter, and a 320 by 240 that should be uh, uh, should be available around the same time and cost around 2000 Good price, they had two prototypes, image quality looked good, the control looked very reasonable, single rotary knob that you press and uh, turn it on, that, that was very good. Uh, the rest of the Bushnell lineup is just mystifying. Ton of scopes, they're all labeled new. I kind of looked around a little bit and gave up on trying to figure out what's what. Uh, some different colors, I think. I'm not sure if anything is really new. Um, I'll have to look at it more carefully. Excuse me. Uh, I, uh, let's see. I stopped by Caltech and they've got a new version of the KSG. That is, you know, bullpup short uh, shotgun, but single uh, magazine tube. So it's really light and compact. I actually liked it. I always liked the products, but I can never get them in California, so that didn't help. I got a chance 
excuse me, uh, to go and visit with David Tubb, which is always fun. Uh, he's got his new 33XC, kind of a longer, better uh, 38 Lapua, and the adaptive target rifle, which is really, really impressive. I, mean, I think it's a very nice piece. I went and spent some time with the guys at Cytron. They have a new zero-stop design for the elevation turret. They really like it. It's simple yet effective. There is a new Aztec 4 to 20 by 50 uh, Philippine made front focal plane scope. It's a mil scale radical, it's a not, not a mil tree, not a mil grid, uh, but it looked uh, quite nice. I, I like it. I think, I think it'll do really well with it. It's in the you know, $6,700 price range. There is a 4.5 to 24 by 56 S5, their top end scope. Illuminated reticle, front focal plane, nice kind of a mill tree reticle. Exposed turrets, locking windage, non locking elevation, but with zero stop this year. They had this uh, scope last year, and this time it is with zero stop. Now they've got a zero stop, I'm probably uh, gonna get my hands on one and take a look. I like S5, S5 scopes, and I'm happy to see Citron play. Uh, 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 play in this uh, range. The S3 scopes are also getting the uh, are also getting the uh, tree reticle. Uh, not a tree, excuse me, zero stop turret, but they're not really getting the tree reticle except for some second focal plane 10 to 50 scopes, which makes no sense. Uh, but um, overall, I'm happy to see the direction which Citron is going. They're capable of making really nice scopes so it's kind of cool to see that um, they're getting them in a little bit more uh, of a, uh, a little bit more of a tactical direction for lack of a better word Mossberg now makes a handgun that I did not expect I saw an article somewhere so I went and looked it's kind of like a little bigger than Glock 43 though not by much single stack 9 millimeter striker fired Decent trigger, really nice reset, so maybe they're onto something. I mean, I live in California, so I can't get one anyway, but nevertheless. And last, uh, but not least, of what I uh, what I remember, there may be more, is Andres Defense. It's a German company I've never heard of before. They are making a really, really tiny thermal clip-on that... Uh, looks like uh, it can clip on an Alcan or some small it looks like this so if this is an Alcan Spectre DR I don't know if you can, now you can see it this is a clip on it's literally this big I thought that was the coolest thing ever it's kind of expensive but eight grand seven grand something like that um, one of the better thermal clip on integrations that I've seen uh, to date so uh, I thought that was a really cool thing. Thermal is still expensive, but it's becoming more and more uh, available for civilians, uh, which is a nice thing. Okay. Anyhow, uh, it's short today. I'll do more tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Uh, really appreciate your time.